Bless you, bless you for a bit. Now, what, hey, look at this. What have we all, oh, two, look at this. Oh, two James from Lou. Where is he, Lou? <laughs> Impossible to know <laughs> whether it's sentimental. It is. Is, oh no, is it, Lou, will it make me cry? Probably. No, are you serious? <laughs> Probably. Are you deadly serious? Should I open it? Okay, I'm going to do it. Open it. It's for, it's for your office. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks, Lou. Lou has designed. Look, Lou has made this entire Christmas miracle happen. <laughs> the greatest designer, the greatest set designer in show business. I'm going to say it right now. And he has given me a picture of Winnie, who, um, and the reason he's given me this is I walk past Winnie every morning to my office, and this is how she greets me. Can you see? Can you see what she's doing? Look at that. <laughs> Thank you. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> I will also say, Winnie, I think this is very disrespectful. I do not think you are a hoe for a second. I, mean, I do not. I mean, you'll never be a hoe to me, Winnie. You will I... always be a messy bitch, and I love you. Yes, let's go. I'm going to put that down here because I don't think we can show that on CBS, but it is. It's that time. It's time for the news. <laughs> And in less than a month, the Republican-controlled House of Representatives will be in session, but we're still not sure who the Speaker of the House will be. Republican leader Kevin McCarthy, who wants the job, currently does not have enough votes. Not the Republicans have ever let not having enough votes stop them before. <laughs> Here's my thoughts on this. You can't be in charge if your name's Kevin. I don't mean that disrespectfully to any Kevins, but I don't think... This is the House of Representatives. It's not a jamba juice. <laughs> now, if McCarthy doesn't get a majority in the first vote, the Speaker election will proceed to multiple ballots until someone does. And if that doesn't work, the two leading candidates go head-to-head -head on an American Ninja Warrior obstacle course. <laughs> that's actually true. That's actually true, since that's what they did in 1923. The last time there was a deadline. That's how, that's how Mitch McConnell gets his seat every year. 100. Oh, the guy is a beast up He's there. He's amazing on it. He looks like a tortoise. Yeah. So you think that he's slow. Yeah. But actually... He moves like a jaguar. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's beautiful. It's very sexual to watch. Well, I think that of Mitch McConnell... Two, four, seven, three, six, five. That's oh exactly God. right. You know, I don't like what he stands for, but when yeah. he looks at me with that Ooh. little tortoise face, <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, I just threw up. And here's an exciting scientific breakthrough to tell you about. We are one step closer to a universal flu vaccine, something scientists have tried to achieve for decades. That means someday soon, one shot could protect you from every strain of influenza. I guess they were inspired by how grateful so many Americans were the last time scientists developed a life-saving vaccine. <laughs> we're on the verge of another amazing vaccine. Nice try, Bill Gates. <laughs> You're not getting any more microchips in my bloodstream. <laughs> this is America. Yeah. Stop the steal. Yeah. Stop the steal. <laughs> Imagine someone just tuned in at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> they just tuned in, they're like, what the f <laughs> But it is still early. So far, the vaccine has only been tested on mice and ferrets. Well, not all of the ferrets. A bunch of ferrets refuse to participate due to <laughs> my freedoms. <laughs> and has everybody... Who here, has everybody decorated for Christmas yet? Put your hands up. Have you done your tree? Have you decorated? Wow, you miserable <laughs> bastards. <laughs> Well, look, if you haven't, let me break this news to you. You might be in for a shock, because due to inflation, Christmas trees are costing up to 20% more than they were last year. Yes. Yeah, great. More money. Straight into the pocket of Big Santa. 
<laughs> you know what I, you know what you should do? Do what I do. Just steal from, steal one from work. <laughs> I do. I make off with that last show, banging in the car. I walk in, I throw it at the children. <laughs> Christmas trees cost 20% more than last year. So if you really care about somebody, make sure to leave a Christmas tree under their Christmas tree this year. <laughs> And according to economists, retailers have a new holiday headache. This year, people are opting to spend their money on more travel instead of gifts. I think it's smart. You know, gifts eventually get thrown away, but the memory of your dad turning around and screaming at you on a family road trip, that... <laughs> that lasts a lifetime. <laughs> travel instead of presents. I tell you who really gets affected by this. The elf on the shelf. Do you know what I mean? What am I, I going to threaten to take away from my kids now? Their aisle seat? <laughs> I feel like swapping travel for gifts, it sort of sets unattainable standards. Do you know what I mean? You get a box, you're like, oh. <laughs> Could it be a plane ticket to Italy? <laughs> oh, it's Crocs. It's Crocs. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> what would you rather get? Great presents or someone just slips you something for a vacay? I, I think... wasn't talking to you, madam, with yeah. all due respect. <laughs> you go vacay? For sure. Would you go vacay? Definitely. Would you go vacay? Vacay? <laughs> vacay? <laughs> vacay? No. No! Oh, what? Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> she wants the gifts. I want the gift. You want the gift. I like the mystery of opening the present. Yeah, oh, I love you for that. I Thank love you. you for that. Thank you. And I like the mystery too. I love the mystery until you get the mystery and it's that. <laughs> <laughs> and did you see this? A movie theater in Thailand, and of course you saw it, it was about a movie theater in Thailand. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> they, <laughs> a lot of people are like, yeah, I know this story. Uh, <laughs> they ran a promotion recently offering all-you-can-eat popcorn, right? But they forgot to put any restrictions on it, so moviegoers showed up with some big containers to fill. Here's some of them here. Walking into the cinema holding a loose toilet. <laughs> Someone says, what, what are you doing? And you're like, didn't you hear? Unlimited popcorn! <laughs> now, they're calling it all you can eat, but here in America, those containers are actually considered kid size. <laughs> I don't really understand the point of getting more popcorn it's... than you can eat in a day. Like, it's not like you're going home and going, oh, OK, well, we'll do popcorn, we'll do popcorn sandwiches tomorrow. <laughs> I can do a nice popcorn soup for dinner, <laughs> and then we should have a little bit of popcorn for dessert. Make the most of it. Cool, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> when you go to the movies, what's your go-to snack? Popcorn excluded? Yeah, popcorn can... is the go-to snack, but you take a popcorn, you sprinkle some M&Ms yes. into it. Yes, thank you. Peanut M&Ms. Peanut M&Ms. Yes. Yes. 100%. Yeah. And, then and every butter now in then, the middle. Yeah, you're going in for the, for the popcorn bite. Ooh, there's a little visitor. <laughs> It's a peanut M&M. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I'm sure, I'm sure Sam Mendes will love the idea of thinking that when you go to see Empire of Light, you're, yeah. what you're really excited about is finding an M&M you've already bought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somewhere in your bag of popcorn. That dude makes movies for people like me who find delight in little M&M surprises. You're all right? absolutely it's right. <laughs> yeah. It's true. And finally, we had to show you this, OK? We had to show you this because unlike CBS News, or 60 minutes, okay? This is a place that will not back down from shining a light on the difficult stories, okay? We've always done it, we always will. You're not gonna find this anywhere else. You know why? They're too scared, okay? Because in the United Kingdom, a country of my birth, so it means a lot for me to be telling this story, an order of fish and chips recently went viral for, um, well, see if you can work out why it went viral. <laughs> Oh, because it was too big of a portion. Do you see it? Do you see it? Yeah. Put it up again. I just want to make sure everybody sees it. Yeah. 
I've got to say, if they bring that, that is a definite knife and fork situation. There is, there is no good way to eat that with your hands. <laughs> to me, it just looks like a mix-up. It's a mix-up of two classic British meals. The person asked for fish and chips, ended up, get ready, Guillermo, it's a big one, okay? I want a big, because this is big. The person asked for fish and chips, and they ended up with spotted dick. <laughs> That's the news. We'll be right back with more of the Late Late Show, everybody.